Welcome to this lesson on Australia's uniqueness and the Australians. Um, in the next few minutes I would like to give you a short introduction to why this country is so fascinating, important and interesting to us. Before I start talking about the climate, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, an impression of uh, the sheer size of the country. As you can see, territorially, it's uh, over 7.7 .7 million square kilometers, compared with the less than 3.5 million square kilometers of Europe. You see the massive difference in size. You can uh, imagine a journey from Romania, from... Uh, uh, Bucharest all the way to Lisbon and you still didn't get from Brisbane to Perth. It's a massive country, it's a beautiful country and as we said the climate is very very uh, varied. Um, <clears throat> you find everything from beautiful Mediterranean landscapes along South Australia for example to beautiful beautiful thick dense uh, rainforests down in the south near Melbourne and then of course there is the outback which makes up for about two-thirds of the land area of the country massive uh, steppes and deserts with, uh, which are very very arid this, uh, this, uh, this unique climate leads to unique landscapes obviously Although the whole country is pretty flat, as you can see from the map showing up uh, every now and again uh, in the picture, you will see monoliths, which are big massive rocks that stick out all by themselves from the desert floor. Um, the f most famous one is in this picture, it's called Uluru, or its uh, previous name, its colonial name, was Ayers Rock which raises all the way uh, to 867 meters in the middle of the desert. Uh, it's a holy site for the Aborigines people. You can climb Uluru, but you need special permissions and uh, you, can, you have to follow very strict guidelines set out by the Aborigines. But of course it's not just massive rocks. You can find massive mountains. Um, the Great Dividing Range uh, is uh, the big mountain range that runs along the east coast of Australia and its highest point is Mount Quisco which is 2,230 meters high and as you can see it's wonderfully uh, recreated and repurposed for uh, skiing it's a fantastic ski resort there with several trails and of course one cannot talk about um, Australia without mentioning the Great Barrier Reef uh, which runs for 2,000 kilometers along the coast of Australia and it's uh, the largest coral reef in the world. The unique climate and the unique landscapes obviously give rise to a unique flora and fauna. Um, I just wanted to show you some of the uh, fascinating animals that I that I thought uh, were are worth mentioning. The cassowary, which is a fairly dangerous running bird. It's uh, it can't fly, but it can kill people. It can chase you along the. Uh, forest paths in the um, rainforest. You might not recognize him, he is a Tasmanian devil, always on the brink of extinction, but they always pull themselves out by their own ears and uh, they are still around, luckily, happily. A platypus, the most unlikely animal you've ever seen, probably. You've seen these guys, I'm sure. And these guys, but perhaps not these ones, uh, not the one in the, with the moustache, but the one uh, the, uh, the man is holding, it's a wombat. So, um, just very quickly an overview of the country. Six main territories, uh, Western Australia as, with Perth as the capital, 
Northern Territory with Darwin as the capital, South Australia, Adelaide, Queensland, Brisbane, New South Wales, Sydney and Victoria, Melbourne. We should also mention that there is uh, the Australian uh, Capital Territory which, is, which can be found in, Cambr in Canberra. Since uh, 1913, when it was decided that this inland city, biggest inland city of Australia, would get this title of being the capital, although both Sydney and Melbourne competed for it. And we should also mention the uh, one off coast big island called um, Tasmania, with Hobart as its capital. Now let's look at a little bit uh, at the Australians. First of all, how many of them are there? Well, according to uh, these uh, statistics from 2013, there are 23.13 million Australians. If you compare this with the 88 million uh, Germans, it's, it looks like a small number, especially if you compare it with the map that I showed you just a few minutes ago. These are the original inhabitants of the people uh, of the continent. They are the Abor Aborigines. Of course, it's a bit of a cheat because uh, I show you one picture with different people um, singing it, but we shouldn't see, think of the Aborigines as one group of people. It's uh, 400 different tribes with their different customs, traditions, culture, territories, behaviors. It's a fascinating, fascinating culture. We know, we still know very little about. Um, this is a very sad statistics that shows that uh, around the time of the arrival of the Europeans, <coughs> there were around 310, 315 million, uh, thousand, sorry, uh, Aborigines people around Australia which number went down to as little as about 65,000 uh, in the 1920s and 30s, and then a steady, gradual and slow increase has started since then, and by 1971 they reached 150,000, and by about today we can talk about about 250,000 Aborigines, so that's a success story and a sad story at the same time. Most of the immigrants are uh, settlers from uh, Anglo-Irish origins, especially before the World War, before the Second World War. 98% of all immigrants to Australia were British or Irish. Uh, they used to refer to Australia as uh, more British than Britain itself. After the Second World War, massive influx of Italian, Greek and German people uh, arrived, changing the um, ratio of uh, nations a little bit. With Asia being so close, of course Asians play a very important role, but very surprisingly, between the cold rush uh, of the 1850s when the cities like Ballarat where they found massive oil, uh, massive um, gold deposits uh, which attracted the first uh, Chinese settlers. There was a big, big uh, gap when very few Chinese people arrived. This was partly due to the so-called White Australia Immigration Policy which between 1901 and uh, the late 1970s really uh, restricted the number of people coming to Australia, uh, preferring people coming from a British um, background. And refugees started arriving from Southeast Asia, um, namely from Vietnam. In the 1970s they were referred to as the boat people. This is a boat of uh, boatload of um, Vietnam, Vietnamese refugees from the 1970s. Um, these ships are still coming uh, from Southeast Asia and these people are still referred to as uh, boat people but of course everybody who knows uh, that uh, Australians are a funny bunch of course there is a question of 
who is not a boat person in Australia, really. One interesting uh, aspect, and I just wanted to show you this map qu and quickly, of the very uneven distribution. As we said, th this is a massive country, uh, but if you look at the dots scattered around the country, which refer each dot is about a thousand person, you see how uh, unevenly the population is spread out. Another interesting thing is the urbanization, which was a process supported by the government. They tried to get, uh, at the moment, it looks like uh, 9 out of 10 Australians live in uh, the big cities. So it's only 10% of the population that live outside the cities. The Aborigines were moved into cities, and um, the block was a very uh, famous example, has been a very famous example in uh, fairly central um, Sydney this uh, area was created it's, an, uh, it's a housing project for Aborigines people up until 2004 it uh, sort of developed and turned into a quite a slummy dangerous area it's got a reputation for being very dangerous um, in 2004 after an Aborigines uh, young man was killed uh, the massive protest broke out and uh, pr and the whole area was then repurposed and retargeted and uh, now it's uh, uh, it has a very different look and uh, a process of uh, out uh, of sending people to outstations and re um, familiarizing people with their original surroundings has started and there are more and more places around the country which are like the picture you saw of Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory. So, we will have a quick quiz at the, end, uh, at the beginning of next lesson. I would like you to mention at least three unique Australian animals. Not very difficult, I think. Second question will be the percentage of the territory of Australia. Uh, that is the outback. What percentage is the outback? Can you tell me what's a monolith? and which is the most famous example of a monolith in Australia. Who were the first big wave of, of, of Asians who arrived? Where were they from? And when did they arrive and why? And then, who are the boat people? And do you agree that everyone is a boat person in Australia, therefore they should not limit immigration? Is my next question. You will also have a task preparing a mini-project with two or three other students. Um, you can choose one of the three topics or you can come up with your own topic. You have 50 minutes to prepare a three-minute presentation that you will deliver at the beginning of the lesson on the 5th of March. And I will grade this task. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, monologue. Sorry about my voice, I'm still getting out of it. But see you in class on Thursday. Thank you.